So did Jephthah sacrifice his daughter? That's what we're going to cover in today's Bible study video, so let's get started. Hey Bible believers, Israel Kim here from Now Word, and in today's video we're going to be talking about whether or not Jephthah actually sacrificed his daughter, because it, 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 it has a huge gap and huge divide um, based on did he do it, did he not do it. So I want to kind of get into it today and kind of see what the scripture actually suggests to us. Um, first and foremost now the first thing i want to highlight in today's video is this is not a video on whether or not god wants or desires um child sacrifice or anything like that okay i think it's quite clear throughout the scriptures that god um detests the nations that do that kind of stuff and um god obviously um doesn't ask people to ultimately do that kind of stuff as well okay that's the first thing i want to highlight okay so what's highlight so whether or not one person did or did not um, potentially do this um, that doesn't make or um, outline um, God wanting a certain thing to happen so the first thing we have to do is in my opinion is just go to the text at hand and see what the scripture actually says okay so Judges 11 verse 30 to 31 it reads and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said if thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Okay, so we're going to continue to read down anyway, but what does it say? Okay, what does Jephthah say? Well, he says, if the Lord delivers me from this battle and I come back in peace, the thing that meets me, okay, from my house when I come, what does he say? He says, whatever it is will surely be the Lord's, okay, and he will offer it up for a burnt offering, okay? So let's say, for example, firstly, that it wasn't his daughter in question. Let's say, um, a lamb or a goat or whatever it is came to meet him from his journey i don't think there'll be much of a debate most people would look at this and say okay you know what you know what he said whatever it came he's going to offer it up for a burnt offering and there wouldn't be much dispute but I, where i feel the dispute comes into this is because it's a it's a person if he did actually do this then people automatically try and link the two and say you know what because he made a vow to god that god is actually the one um, that is actually demanding it, which is not actually the case, okay? God didn't tell him to do anything like this. He said this out of his own mouth and said, you know what? Whatever's first to meet me, I, it's going to be the Lord's and I'm going to offer it up for a burnt offering. So he said he's going to offer it up for a burnt offering, okay? So those are the verses at hand. Now let's kind of go down um, a couple of verses and kind of read some more of the narrative. So we're going to cover Judges 11, verse 34 to 40, and let's read what it says, okay? So it says, and Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house. So this is after the battle. And behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she, only child, beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I could not go back. So what did he say? Okay, He said, it will be the Lord's, and he will offer it up for a burnt offering. So this is what he's referring to here in verse 35. So firstly, from 34, what does it say? It says, well, his daughter was the first thing that came out celebrating, basically, with musical instruments. Um, and it says he didn't have any other children, Okay, which is obviously... Um, something the scripture wanted to highlight to us. Now, in 35, it says, um, he saw her, he rent his clothes, so he ripped his clothes um, and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought him very low, so he's very sad, okay? And you are one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and he cannot go back. Go back from what? From what he said, okay? It's going to be the Lord, and he's going to offer it up for a burnt sacrifice, burnt offering. 36, and she said unto him, My father, thou hast opened my mouth, Thou, thou hast opened thy mouth um, unto the Lord. Do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, um, of the children of Ammon, 
And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away two months. And she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father who did with her to his vow which he had vowed. And she knew no man, and it was a custom in Israel. The daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite four days in a year. Okay, so after we cover these these pretty much six verses, there's two main views. Okay, which is kind of, um, well, one of them is kind of self-explanatory anyway. Which is the first main view is that they believe that Jephthah actually offered his du'a as a burnt offering to the Lord, okay? The second view is that Jephthah didn't offer his du'a as a burnt offering to the Lord, but what he actually did is he devoted her to the Lord, so he gave her to the Lord um, to work um, for the Lord, etc. Okay, sort of similar to how the scripture talks about Samuel, okay? Um, Samuel's mom wanted a son she was being ridiculed by um, her husband's other wife and she vowed to God and said you know what if you give me a son um, I'm going to give him to the Lord and he she God granted her a son and then she weaned him and t took care of him etc to, to his at a certain age and then she gave him to the ch to the I was going to say to the church she gave him to the Lord to the priest and he came up and that's how Samuel became um, a prophet and obviously um, worked under Eli Okay, the priest at the t the high priest at the time. So those are the two views. He offered her as a burnt offering, or he devoted her in that regard. Again, um, um, I want to kind of talk more from the the second view because um, the first view is obviously most people. It's, it's kind of easy to kind of ascertain how they get to that conclusion. Now, from the second view, people take some of the verses. Um, they obviously don't take. 30 and 31 but what they take verses like 38 39 and 40 so they say well if he offered her for a burnt offering why would his daughter want to bewail her virginity um, they say she's bewailing her virginity because she's never going to have a husband because she's now devoted to um, working for god per se okay and it it's not far-fetched i'm not going to say it's far-fetched in any stretch of the imagination and they basically talk about because in verse 40 it says the daughters of israel went up yearly to lament the daughter of jephthah the gilead at four days in a year they say when it's talking about that it means every year four days in a year they went up to where she was to lament the fact to lament her virginity to lament the fact that she's never going to have a husband etc now again it's not it's not far fetched in the biggest scheme of things in the um, in the stretch of stretch of, stretch of the imaginations. Okay, um, personally for me, um, I'm personally good under both circumstances. Now, the second circumstance of him devoting her to the Lord that makes sense to me as well because of what I kind of alluded to already in regards to Samuel. But for me, I'm if I was um, as I'm doing this video, um, deciding on which way I'd lean towards, I'd lean more towards him actually offering her for a burnt sacrifice. Now, again, like I said at the top of the video, this in no way, shape or form um, suggests to us that God wants this because God is not in this narrative here. God didn't tell Jephthah to, to do it. Jephthah said this out of his own mouth. Secondly, I don't agree with... Um, offering your children as sacrifices under these circumstances okay doesn't make sense at all um so that's another thing to to categorize and say before people start watching this video and say oh you know what he agrees with um offering people as sacrifice and all that kind of stuff no i don't okay now obviously i've said what i believe i'd lean more towards him actually doing it why do i agree with that or believe that well first and foremost okay i have to take him at his word what did he say okay he said whatever comes out in verse 30 and 31 it will be the laws and he will offer it up as a burnt 
sacrifice and burnt offering okay that was exactly what he said now secondly um just to add to that is what does he say um in verse 35 when he talks to her he says you have you basically made him sad you brought him low what did he say for i have oh this is the back part of 35 for i have opened my mouth unto the lord um and i cannot go back okay so he's basically saying look I've said something, I can't go back from doing it. Okay, what did he say? He said it's going to be the Lord's and he's going to offer it for a burnt offering. Okay, now obviously some people allude to some of the stuff, some of the redemption laws in the law, okay, in the five books of Moses, where God would say at a certain time, look, instead of a person, redeem that person with, let's say for example, money. Or redeem that person with an animal okay which again is another thing which I can look at and say you know what this isn't the most far-fetched okay um, this for me isn't let's say for example like a 80 on the side of him offering her and 20 on the side of him devoting her to um, to the Lord for, for service okay I'd say this is more of a 60 40 okay and it's really mainly because of what he says he says he's going to offer it for a burnt sacrifice and secondly he says he's made a vow he can't go back thirdly okay just going back uh, going even further into this stuff is what does he say he says she says she wants to go and bewail her virginity okay he suffers her to do that okay go two months and do that then what does it say it says in verse 39 and it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father who did with her to his vow which he had vowed okay so what was the vow that he made yes that she was going to be the lord's but how he was going to offer it up as a burnt offering a burnt sacrifice so when i look at those those piece of text that's what makes me lean more towards him actually offering her up for a sacrifice and when it gets to 40 where some of the, the people from the dissenting view are going to say well you know what no they went up to mourn with her i don't necessarily see it as saying that okay i see it more as saying that they mourned for her because of what he actually did to her okay um so like i said already okay this is one of 60 40 it's not 80 20 or 90 10 or anything like that but um, the reason I'm so kind of torn, but I'd lean more towards this is kind of what I've described, okay? Just reading the narrative um, more literally, as it doesn't give you any cause not to, that's what he did, okay? Now, there's things both ways, okay? Firstly, I'd say this. Why would Jeff to do this? Well, obviously, he's he, dealt, he made this vow and he said this because... Um, he was making a vow to the Lord based on the Lord delivering him out of a battle, okay, um, against the children of Ammon. Um, so that's one thing. Secondly, don't disregard his thinking behind this, okay. I personally don't think this was the wisest thing to do. It's not the wisest thing to do anyway. Um, but he may have considered um, at the time of him actually saying, okay, you know what, he's going to do this. What happened with Abraham and Isaac, Okay. Now, some people look at Abraham and Isaac and say, you know what, God um, is for child sacrifice or burnt offerings to him through people and stuff like that. And that's not actually true. I'm not going to get into that into this, in this video. If you want to know why God told Abraham to, to offer Isaac, okay, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. Because when we come out with that video, you know exactly why personally. But secondly, what the Bible tells us in the New Testament, I believe it's Romans, okay, about Abraham. It tells us that Abraham believed that God was willing to raise up Isaac from the dead if he actually went through with it. Okay, So Abraham knew, based on the promises God actually given to him, that even if he goes through with this, then God is actually going to be the one um, that's going to have to do work here in the sense that God is actually going to have to raise Isaac up from the dead because he was the promised seed. Okay, And the promised seed is no good dead okay just to cut that short um so jephthah could have been thinking in his mind you know what i've made this vow and although god didn't tell me to make this vow um god is able to raise up his daughter from the dead um as a way to kind of i don't want to say get him out of this vow that he's made but um 
kind of save him from the vow that he made, from saving from himself ultimately. Okay, so that could be something Jephthah was thinking. That's not the most far fetched thing as well. Okay, this is obviously history that Jephthah may have been privy to and have actually known that happened with Abraham, etc. Okay, now why am I so 60 40 on this? Well, a couple of reasons. Okay, one because of some of the points I've actually made for that side. Okay, they're not far fetched, they actually make quite sense, quite a bit of sense. So it could be that, but even some more things that kind of make me. Um, so close on this one is everywhere else in the scriptures Jephthah is spoken of in good light, in good stead, in high esteem. So, for example, when we get to Samuel, um, what does it say? It says, This is 1 Samuel 12, verse 11. It says, And the Lord sent Jerubbabel and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side. And you dwell safe. So here in um, the book of Samuel, it's going back to the book of Judges and saying, look, I sent you Jerubbabel, which is Gideon, and Bedan, which was another judge that the scripture talks about, and Jephthah, and obviously Samuel, um, the prophet, and delivered you out of your hand of your enemies on every side, and you dwell safe. So these are the people I sent you that delivered you. Okay, um, He's spoken about in a good light. And obviously in Hebrews 11, verse... Um, 32, what does it say? This is the, the, the famous scriptures in, in scripture in the New Testament that about all the, the fathers of faith. Look what it says. And what shall I shall I more say? For the time would fail me. This is after he's talked about so many different people and the great obstacles and great um, acts of faith um, that they, they 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 exhibited to overcome. Okay. Um, great enemies. Look what it says. So he cut this. What can I say? There's so much to talk about. What do you say to tell you of, of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, David also, and Samuel and the prophets? So even here in Hebrews 11, it's basically saying that Jephthah is this was this good person. Okay, so I'm not saying that um, just because it's talking about him in good esteem other places that he didn't do it. But these are some of the other things that I considered um, when I'm thinking about did he actually offer his door as a sacrifice but again just to wrap up this video i want you to understand and know that look you know what whether he did do this he did offer up or, or whether he didn't do this or if he did offer up as a sacrifice and the burnt offering this was not god's will this was not god's desire god didn't ask him to do it okay this was a man who made what most people just consider a foolish vow okay and obviously if he did do it he actually followed through on that decision okay um so again that's something for you to consider i think just looking at judges 11 from a bit basic view it kind of highlights to us that he probably more likely did do it because he said he was going to do it and then it later on says that he did with her according to the vow that he made and the vow was that he's going to offer it up as a burnt sacrifice burnt offering so that's it for today's video um, if you've got any questions or if you've got your views i want to know your views and any scripture you have to kind of back up your points comment below the video and we can take this conversation further until next time thanks and take care um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel click the bell notification um, all the best and see you soon